kind of my voice getting affected by my allergies, I will not lead a song, or at least start a song. <laughs> Save that one for next time. But I do appreciate the opportunity I have to speak to you once more this day. If I were to say dead man walking, what would come to your mind? Dead man walking. Well, typically we use that phrase to show that someone is walking to their death. They have been condemned to death and they're going from their prison cell to the place of execution. It's also interesting that this phrase has also been applied to someone who's about to lose their job. Now, the other one that we might know of more recently is maybe dead men typing. We're on our phones walking around and not really paying attention to what's going on. I know when I was at Sam Houston, there was someone who was texting while walking and actually went through a glass window, shattered into a billion pieces. So they had to replace that window. I don't know how the person fared. I didn't see any blood, but of course they might have ran away in, in shame because of what they just did. But dead man walking. I looked up this last night when I was getting this little lesson together. There are currently 197 inmates on death row in, in the state of Texas. Texas is set to execute three of them in 2021. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 6, speaking of different types of widows there, Paul says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Now certainly this doesn't remain limited to a widow. It would apply to everyone dead while she liveth. He liveth. Many go through this life in this physical world thinking that this world is all there is. And they seek out fame, power, fortune, different physical gratification. But we know that Moses had access to all these. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 27. He had all of Egypt at his disposal. We know that Jesus, our Savior, had access to all these different things. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, as well as Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. But both of these men forsook their lusts. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26 and 27. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, Moses laid aside all the different pleasures that Egypt had to offer. Instead, he chose to suffer with his people. And Jesus chose to be the Savior of mankind in the flesh. He chose to overcome temptation so that it could be rightfully stated that he's been touched by the feeling of our infirmities, yet has no sin. However, in contrast, most of the world seeks to fulfill these lusts. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Now we must be always thinking about the fact that any sin will put us in this state of being dead while walking. Adam and Eve both sinned. They're in Genesis chapter 3. As a result, they died spiritually. As a consequence to that, they brought death into the world. We did not inherit their sin. We are reaping the consequences of their sin, however. Saul of Tarsus. He was a member of The Walking Dead. I've never seen that show, but I heard it's interesting. Not that he was a zombie, but spiritually dead by persecuting the church. Wreaking havoc of it. Destroying those who would proclaim Christ as King and Savior. Each of us have become 
dead while walking when we reach the age of accountability. Where we know that our actions are either good or bad, right or wrong. What are we doing about that? Well, hopefully, our conscience is kicking in and doing what it's supposed to, saying you're violating the standard that God has given you. Thankfully, there is pardon extended to the entire world. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto him, or cometh to the Father, except by him. He is the only way. We see in Acts chapter 22, verses 14 through 16, that Saul of Tarsus, after being struck blind, he was taught the gospel. And he obeyed that gospel. As a result, he was baptized and he was saved. Those who were responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus, our Christ, received the gospel in Acts chapter 2. A small portion of them responded to the gospel in a positive way. They were saved. We today have the gospel in written form. We don't have to remain dead while walking. And for us, the pattern is the same as it was in the first century. If it worked for them, it will work for us. It did, and it will. Hearing God's word, believing it, repenting of our past sins, confessing Christ before others, and ultimately being baptized for the remission of our sins. From that point and forward, we have life, spiritual life. And being faithful to the law of Christ, we can expect eternal life with Him in heaven. Now how many countless souls are dead while walking? In, in Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 through 13, we have there written, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses we all should take great note and receive great peace for it that when we have indeed been converted to the law of Christ, we have all of our trespasses forgiven. And we cease to be dead while walking. But of the world, how many of these souls are dead while walking? How many of them are in the church? The remedy is still the same. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7-9. through 9. Are you one of them? Are you dead while walking? It doesn't have to remain the same. Repent, confess, and you'll be restored. Or if you've not become a Christian, take those steps as we just referenced to become a Christian. Whatever your need may be, please st together stand and have that need met.